Advent Adventures is going to be different this year because we're going to do it virtually, but in reality, it's still the same. During the season of Advent, we allow for ourselves to be a people who are waiting, waiting for the coming of Jesus into our lives in a very special way. I was thinking that the first time Jesus appeared in this world, we can't imagine how everyone was waiting for something to happen. There was a lot of unrest, a lot of struggles in people's lives, much like it is today. But they were waiting and they didn't know if the Messiah was really going to come, but they were waiting. We know that the Messiah is going to come on Christmas in a very special way. During this season of waiting, I'm going to ask each and every one of you, no matter how old or how young you are, to think about how you can truly get yourselves ready for the coming of Jesus. How do you want Jesus to enter into your heart this year, this Christmas season? Do you want him to bring you the gift of joy, the gift of peace, the gift of love? Do you want him to help you to be able to share your life more deeply with the people who need it the most? During this season of Advent, and while you take time to do this Advent Adventure projects with your family, think about what it is that you want for yourself and talk about it with yourselves and with your family. Have a very good season of Advent. Each of you received a box that said, do not open until Sunday the 29th because it's the first day of Advent. So here we go. Inside your box, you will find a little um, Advent candle coloring page and a pack of colors to color them with. Your next sheets will be a paper clipped um, three pieces. You have the stable and you have these characters to color and cut out and then put them in your stable. And you can do that any way you want. You can glue them in, you can uh, staple them in, whatever works. Color them first, cut them out, and then make your stable. The next box, or the next item will be your advent calendar. And that is, um, they've got numbers on all the little boxes. Each day you open the number, like the first day, obviously you'd open page, uh, box one, two, three, all the way until advent. And what it does is once they're all open, it will build a nativity scene for you. Okay, the next thing is the food pantry list. That is this colorful page in your box. And what we're suggesting is that each day you collect something for the St. John Parish food pantry. 
We'd like you to reuse your box. Um, you, can cut, you can decorate it any way you want. You can put wrapping paper on it. You can color it. You can put Stick stickers it. on it. Whatever, whatever you want to do, decorate it. Each day there's a suggested item to put in the box. You certainly can use whatever you want to put in. But every day you collect something and then on the 24th or the 25th, you would bring it along with you to church and leave it here for Mass, at Christmas Mass. If you are not coming to Christmas Mass in person, you can drop your box off at the parish office anytime after Christmas and they will take it from you. And when you get here on Christmas, we'll have a designated spot to drop your boxes. Okay. Then we have the paper chain links. And this is a little kindness rainbow that you make with your, you'll have a little baggie full of links. Each day you write a little kindness act on the link and then you link them together each day and create a rainbow. Create a rainbow link at the end, okay? And then there are two music sheets that, so you can sing along. We're singing um, four songs throughout the video and we'd like you to join the choir and sing right along. So we gave you the words. And last but not least, there's a little treat for everyone in the family to have a candy cane and attached is the story of the candy cane. Awesome. And I'm gonna explain this advent wreath. You get a form, you get this cute little green boa that you can wrap around there. Garland. You can take anything, <laughs> it's garland. You can take anything you have at home, garland from your orn ornaments, you can do rickrack, you can do other garland. But on the third Sunday, you'll have four, three, well, four candles. Three are purple, one is pink. And on the third Sunday, you light the pink candle. And it's all explained in this little pamphlet. Mm -hmm. Lots of colored, but it's very pretty and easy to read. So decorate your wreath any way you want to. Make it your own. Make it as much as whatever means imp is important to you. And that's it. And we certainly want to thank all of you for taking part in this year's Advent Adventures. Normally we do it here at church where everyone comes and we do crafts and we just are thankful that so many people took an interest and, and are doing it virtually this year. Thank you and God bless. Have a wonderful, blessed Advent. Thank you. We'd like to dedicate this Advent Adventures excursion to Nancy and Luke LeBouf. They started this so many years ago and they worked so hard at it. We'd like to thank them for their dedication and commitment to St. John's and to all the kids who have en enjoyed Advent Adventures over the years. Yes. Thank God you. bless them. Yes.
Hello, boys and girls. Santa here from Santa's Village. I just wanted to tell you a little story with a sequence of amazing and unforgettable events. It all started when I was feeding the reindeer one morning, just a few weeks before Christmas. I was surprised to find a young boy asleep in the stable. A handsome child who just begged to see how we prepared for Christmas. I agreed and took him around the village to introduce him to all the elves. When we got to the carpenter shop, he was especially attracted to that and wanted to know if he could help out there. It turned out he knew a lot about carpentry. The child just endeared himself to everyone and everything was going just great. I was especially pleased as we were ahead of schedule on the inventory. Then, just when everything was going so well, tragedy struck. While we out searching for a lost reindeer, I slipped on the ice and I fell and I broke my leg. The doctor came and put a cast on it and said, Well, that's it, Santa. Your trip is off. Christmas is only two weeks away, and there's no way you can make the trip this year. What a disaster. Everyone was terribly upset and dejected, except the child. He went right on working in the carpenter shop, making toys. He moved into my house, so he could kind of look after me. He even exercised the reindeer every day. And he made me a set of beautiful wooden crutches that I could at least hobble around a little bit on. In addition to all those activities, he was working on a secret project in the carpenter shop. He had it all screened off so no one could see what it was. The elves were just about bursting with curiosity and finally tried to sneak past him so they could see the secret project. He caught them, though, and he said, If you'll get back to work and finish up these toys, that would make Santa very happy. Then I'll show you the secret project. The elves agreed and quickly got back to work. On Christmas Eve, they finished every last toy, so the child pulled aside the screen. You should have seen the expressions on the faces of those elves when they saw the wonderful secret project. Now, I was here in the house, of course, with my bad leg and all. It was Christmas Eve, and the doctor had come by to make sure that I wasn't going to do anything crazy like go on the trip. I said, no way, Santa. I can get around a bit on these crutches, but there's no way I could make the trip. Just then, I heard something outside the door. I could hardly believe my ears. It was the sound of sleigh bells and prancing reindeer hoofs. The doctor opened the door and there was my sleigh, all loaded up with toys and ready to go. The child waved from the driver's seat, and the elves were shouting from the back, Come on, Santa, we can make the trip now. The secret project was a special place for you to ride. There, attached to my sleigh, was the most remarkable trailer, almost like a recliner lounge on which I could lie back with my leg propped up, all comfortable and safe. The doctor went out and very closely looked at it, and then he said, It looks great, Santa. I'm sure it'll work fine. So they bundled me up, and we took off for the big trip. As we reached each rooftop, the elves did all the chimney climbing while I was in the back checking off the list. 
When we got to the last stop, I was overjoyed. I didn't think we were even going to make the trip. And here we were, finished. The child came back and said, Santa, I know you must be tired, but can we make one more stop? I said, well, listen, I'll go anywhere you want to go. If it hadn't been for you, we could have never made the trip. The child said, I just want to show you where I was born. We took off into the silent night, followed a bright star like I had never noticed before. Such a star. I had never seen such a star. Soon we landed by a humble stable. The child came back and said, Come with me, Santa. Please come with me. He helped me get onto my crutches and together we started hobbling toward the stable. Suddenly, I looked around, and the child had disappeared. Then, I heard the child's voice coming from the stable, saying, Don't be afraid, Santa. This is where I was born, on the first Christmas night. Drop your crutches, and come and kneel with us. Almost overcome with the sudden realization of what I was viewing, I let my crutches fall to the ground. Slowly I walked forward, took off my hat, dropped to my knees before an incredibly beautiful scene, the nativity. There was Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. When I could finally catch my voice, I asked, Why did you come to me? The child's voice replied, To remind you, dear Santa, to remind you and all the world what that Christmas is my birthday. Happy birthday, Jesus. This is only a starry night. Hope is only a tiny light. Far away and it seems so bright. Shining on those who believe. Love is only a mother's home. Joy is only the falling snow. Yeah.
Thank you.